Hello, Cell and Genetic Biology. This is Dr. Chastity Bradford, and we are wrapping up Chapter 6, Tour of the Cell, and this is Concept 6.7. There are extracellular components and connections between cells that help coordinate cellular activities. Most cells synthesize and secrete materials that are external to the plasma membrane. That just means they're outside of the plasma membrane. Now these extracellular structures outside of the cell include cell walls, and cell walls are only in plants. They include the extracellular matrix, which is found in animal cells. They include intercellular junctions. Let's first review the cell wall in plants. So prokaryotes, fungi, and some protists also have cell walls. So not only plants, but you'll find it in prokaryotes. Fungus will have them as well as protists. Uh, the cell wall, of course, is an extracellular structure. And it is a, the single distinguishing factor, I would say, between an animal and a plant cell. It functions to protect the plant, it maintains the plant's shape, and it prevents water, excessive uptake of water. Okay, So always structure function, always be thinking structure function when you go through these lectures because it's a lot of structure. There are a lot of details in these lectures in Chapter 6 about the cell. But what we need you to do is to connect the structures with the function and understand um, and apply them to... Uh, various organisms. Okay, Plant cell walls, they're made of cellulose. Now you should know when you hear os, what that means by now. They have multiple layers. They have a middle lamella, primary and secondary cell wall, and they have plasmodesmata. Recall that I mentioned plasmodesmata in a previous lecture. So they have multiple layers. So this here, this first layer, of course, is the plasma membrane. So we're talking about extracellular structures. So structures outside of the, the, the plasma membrane. What do we find? We find in a plant cell, a primary and a secondary cell wall. Okay. We find middle lamella, and you notice here that it's spelled differently than it was in this previous slide. Okay. And also, you'll see these pores of plasmodesmata. And recall, every time you see a pore, just like in the nucleus, when we had the nuclear pores, there has to be movement of something, right? If there's an opening, there's going to be uh, movement of some type of material. And let's go back. And what we have here is an image of these cellulose fibrils. So we said this plant cell wall is made of cellulose. You can see how um, much of a support network these cellulose fibrils provide. They seem very strong as you look at it in this image. Now, in terms of animal cells outside of the, outside of the cell, outside of the plasma membrane, there is an extracellular matrix. Okay. It's made of glycoproteins, such as collagen, proteoglycans, and fibronectin. You'll also hear people talk about integrins as it relates to the extracellular matrix, because extracellular matrix proteins seem to bind to um, integrins, okay? these proteins on the plasma membrane. What are the functions of the extracellular matrix? Function again, support, adhesion, movement, regulation. This is a pictorial diagram of a plasma membrane. You see these hydrophilic heads and you see the hydrophobic tails. By now you should know what they're composed of, structurally composed of. Notice that these are, there are integrins in this plasma membrane that are connected to this extracellular matrix. In the extracellular matrix, you see these collagen fibrils attached via the integrins. You notice that there's fibronectin in the purple. Laminin, proteoglycans are here. The extracellular matrix of animal cells. 
it's outside of the plasma membrane. And it still is providing support for the cell. There are also intercellular junctions. Now, neighboring cells and tissues, organs or organ systems, they uh, communicate to each other through direct physical contact oftentimes. Now, these uh, intercellular junctions, and there are different types of them, they facilitate this contact between cells. And there are several types of intercellular junctions. There are plasmodesmata in the plant cells. There are tight junctions, desmosomes, desmosomes, and gap junctions. Now you'll often hear um, people calling anchoring junctions desmosomes are anchoring junctions. Okay? Now, let's look at plasmodesmata. They're channels that perforate plant cell walls. Perforate just means put a hole in, basically. So if these are two plant cells, two adjacent plant cells, these are the plasmodesmata that are connecting these two cells, allowing these two cells to communicate. So through these channels, through these plasma desmata, water can go through these small solutes, sometimes proteins and RNA can pass from cell to cell. So if you were asked how do plant cells communicate, this is one way in which they communicate, plasma desmata. Now let's look at the tight junctions, the desmosomes, and the gap junctions that are found in animal cells. Tight junctions, just that word tight, makes you think that it's tight, you know? <laughs> so the adjacent membranes of neighboring cells, they're pressed together. They're tight like glue, literally, preventing leakage of extracellular fluid, preventing leakage from one cell to the other. Then you have desmosomes or anchoring junctions. They just kind of fasten the cells together into strong sheets but it's a very tight anchor. When you think of anchor on a ship, that is something that is weighing it down so it will not move. So desmosomes, they fasten cells together in strong sheets. They anchor the cells together and it's a strong bond. But there can be communication between desmosomes and there can be cellular communication between gap junctions, but not tight junctions. Gap junctions provide cytoplasmic channels between adjacent cells. Okay, so adjacent cells, the cytoplasm of adjacent cells would communicate. Okay. So these are the three different types of intercellular junctions. You have the tight junctions seen here, one cell here, one cell here, and this looks like the microvilli that we looked at previously, the convolutions, providing an increase in what? surface area. Therefore, we have an increase in surface area to volume ratio. Okay. And what they're illustrating here and highlighting here is that between these adjacent, cell, adjacent cells are tight junctions such that there's no secretion or leakage from this cell to the other. See how they're not attached here or here, but only attached here. Okay, so they needed to be connected but not to communicate between the two. Now, there are also um, the other types of junctions that we mentioned are desmosomes and gap junctions. Now, the, there's one cell here, as you see, and one cell here, and now it just kind of zooms in on this area so that we can see the um, desmosomes and how they're connected. Okay, Now, they're adhered together with filaments to anchor these two cells together, but they still can move. There's still some movement that can occur between these two cells. So in these anchoring junctions or these desmosomes, they hold cells tightly together they form strong bonds between the cytoskeleton. So now we have um, the, the cytoskeleton 
of two neighboring cells are held together. Materials can still pass through. Materials can still pass through. Okay. Tight junctions, as we mentioned earlier. Now these, on the other hand, they seal off, usually used to seal um, off body cavities. So between these cells, there will not be any communication. Okay. And the plasma membranes are adjacent here. So now we're connecting plasma membranes with tight junctions. Here, we are connecting the cytoskeletons. Okay. Gap junctions serve as kind of selective pores. Now, in the heart, you have gap junctions. That's how your neighboring cardiac cells communicate. And they beat in coordination because of these gap junctions. Now, gap junctions form pores and channels. And so there can be exchange of materials between these two cells. So there's a direct transfer. There can be a direct transfer of water and ions between adjacent cells. Now in gap junctions, they're also often grouped in cylinders of six. You can see that here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're often grouped in cylinders of six. And the cylinder can be open to form a small pore, such that there is there can be communication between these two adjacent cells. Okay, so this is a, another pictorial diagram of a gap junction. Okay, just so you can see, this is one cell's plasma membrane, another cell's plasma membrane, and they're connected. Okay, see, remember we told you there's a pore usually of um, made of six subunits, that the proteins are grouped in cylinders of six subunits, okay? And look how there can be a direct connection, communication between this cell and this cell when this pore or this gap junction is open. Describe the, to visually describe the uh, intracellular junction. So what do you think this is here? What do you think we have here? What is this? What does it look like? There's a cell here, there's a cell here. Definitely not a tight junction, right? Because they're not, um, there's no occlusion of communication between the two cells. So we're either left with it being a desmosome or a gap junction. Now the desmosomes had these number of a thick filaments and it's connecting the cytoskeleton of the cells and that's exactly what this is. These are desmosomes. Okay? They're forming strong bonds between the cytoskeleton of these two cells. Okay? Now, let's wrap this up. Cells rely on the integration of structures and organelles in order to function and throughout ch chapter 6 I, we've gone through the cell in its entirety and there are a number of details here. But the take home message for this slide is given and provided in this example. In order for a macrophage to destroy bacteria, it involves the whole cell. As John Witherspoon would say, you got to coordinate. So the macrophage, the whole cell has to coordinate. It coordinates components such as the cytoskeleton. It has to move. The lysosomes, their enzymes in there are responsible for digesting and getting rid of this bacteria. And the plasma membrane, it's providing structure and support for the cell. And so, a lip, so the cell itself is a living unit greater than the sum of its individual parts. So at the end of chapter six, you should be able to distinguish between magnification, resolution, prokaryotic, eukaryotic cells, free and bound ribosomes, smooth and rough ER, describe the structure and function of the components of the endomembrane system, briefly explain the role of mitochondria, chloroplast, peroxisomes, describe the functions of the cytoskeleton, 
compare and contrast structure and function of microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments, explain how the ultrastructure of cilia and flagella relate to their function, what are they composed of, basically? That's what we want to know. What are the cilia and flagella composed of, and how does that relate to their function? Describe the structure of a plant cell wall. How is it different from the extracellular matrix of an animal cell? You should be able to describe the structure and the role of the ECM, or the extracellular matrix, in animal cells. Describe four different intracellular junctions.